change the oil seal on the axle um, because it's leaking. I had a look around the back and you can see where the oil is coming out of the back plate. You can see where the oil is coming out of the backing plate underneath the bottom and it's smearing the back of the wheel too. First thing I've got to do is take the wheel off. So I've got my hide hammer and I just Yeah. Now we have to undo the four nuts and take the brake drums off and we're going to undo the nut on the end of the axle shaft. In order to do that, to make life a bit easier, what I'm going to do is cheat a little bit. I'm going to adjust the brakes up so the brake drum is on hard, or the brake adjust is on hard. So that my wheel doesn't turn. And then... I can undo... Now I'm going to leave the brake drum on for the moment, I'll leave it tightened up because I've got to get my split pin out my castle nut that's inside so I'm just going to straighten up my king pin on the back, the pin on the back and get it in so that I can just move it out. This is the most fiddly part of the whole job actually. Okay, we've got the split pin out. Now I'm going to put my socket in. Uh, this is an inch and uh, 5 sixteenths, I believe. Yes, it is. Inch and 5 sixteenths socket. is undo my brake adjuster off completely so it's turning really really easy right so now I'm just going to remove the brake drum and as you can see it's pretty oily all the inside of the brake drum you can tell it's not brake fluid mainly because of it's, it's pretty thick also, if you smell it, if you're really adventurous, you can taste it because there's a distinct taste to uh, gear oil. Now, the other thing we check for is on the wheel cylinder, if you look down here, we push the, the rubbers back. You can see it's perfectly dry. And it's dry in here. So you know the cylinder isn't leaking. We take two items here and push it backwards and forwards. You can see the cylinder isn't seized up either. The brake shoes are completely covered with, with grease now and oil, so they're ruined. Also, the person that put this set of shoes on originally, which I, I don't think was that long ago, uh, put this shoe on backwards. The leading edge of the brake shoe here, where the shoe sits further back on, the lining sits further back on the shoe than it does on this end, so that's called a leading edge. This leading edge should be facing the rotation of the wheel. The wheel goes around this way, that leading edge should be here. On here is put the leading edge at the bottom, not at the top. So this shoe is actually the wrong way around, it should be the other way around. You don't put the shoes on so they match and look nice. The leading edge has got to be at the top where the wheel's going around. So I'm going to take all this lot off now and then we'll, we'll actually, what I'll do first is pull the hub off with my puller. What I've done before we use the hub puller is put the wheel, the, the axle nut back on again. So I've just put it on loose, not tight, just loose, so that when we put the puller and we use the puller on it, if it comes off with a bang it's not going to fly right off and hit somebody, um, the nut will catch it and stop it coming off too far. This is a typical hub puller, it's the one I'm going to use, 
it's, it's got three legs sometimes where you can take off the third leg and just use two to keep stuff symmetrical on the wheel nuts. I put it on the wheel nuts, I use the wheel nuts themselves or the nuts of the uh, car to hold it in position. On the end of the shaft on the puller there's a slight dimple or a point on the end of it and if you look on the end of the axle shaft they very kindly put a hole in it where this pin centers right into it so when I'm turning the shaft it's not going to go off center so this keeps it into the center so the plan is now put this on there put my nuts on it get it all centered and we'll, I'll just fasten all this up first okay. I have me I have me puller assembled to the hub so now I have my little thing that goes on the end and I just turn it on the hub and if it gets really tight I can bash the end of this with my hammer tighten it out but as it happens it's it's come off already I figured this would be fairly loose mainly because I'm up against a nut now but mainly because I've got so much oil and I had oil along uh, the, the, the back of the plate, I've got so much oil this was loose so I, this thing wasn't exactly tight Which, turn the nut right off then you'll notice this will slide off so we've got the complete piece off now, now you can see the axles exposed you can see our oil seal so what, what I want to do instead of removing all the rest of the uh, hub assembly or the bearing assembly what I'm going to do is try and get the oil seal out without doing that so first thing I need to do is this uh, collar that runs on the inside what I'm going to do is just see if I can get this to come out which I can there's slots in it so that when the hub is against it it pushes on the slot and it tightens this piece on the shaft so it's part of the keeping the hub central um, and tightening it on because of the slots. Well if you push the screwdriver in the slot and just turn it you can slide it out. Now I'll be able to get a screwdriver behind the back of there a lot easier. But what I'm going to do is take all the brake shoes and everything else off before I do that. First thing I'm going to do is undo my uh, brake, ret brake shoe returner here. Retainer. this spring back up through there you can hold them in spring so it doesn't go anywhere Okay, so we're going to take out the oil seal, so I can get my screwdriver in here, now the shoes are out of the way, I have to take them off anyway, so i just put my screwdriver in there, because I'm losing oil at the bottom, if I really planned ahead I would have put something on the floor, anyway that takes out the oil seal for me, so what I'm going to do now is clean everything up, and get all my oil off the back of the plate, and off all my parts, and uh, clear up the stuff that I just dropped on the floor. Um, and then we'll start to reassemble it. Right, I've cleaned everything up. I've got all the oil and uh, all the contamination off, off the back plate. Uh, and I'm cleaning it up in the area we want to work. I've, I've just taken all the oil and everything off. What we're going to do now is fit the oil seal. Um, the oil seal's got to go around uh, the correct way. Um, you'll, if you look at the oil seal, you see inside here there's what's a little metal spring. That holds the lip onto the part that slides on here on the collar. This side has got a face towards the oil. 
so that this then will fit inside there and the whole thing, the oil comes this way and gets repelled back this way. If you put it in the other way around, all it'll do is leak oil. So, uh, to get this in nicely, what I do is put a little bit of grease around the outside. Just regular, uh, I'm melting poil wheel bearing grease actually is what I put on there. Anyway, and I shove it in here and then I try and get it in as far as I can with my hand and then I take my little eye down with it and I just tap it in like so until it's seated properly Lost me adjuster. Okay, so we're right in there. Now we have our seal set into the back plate or into the end of the axle. We've got it fairly flush. The next thing we're going to put in is the tapered collar. If you look on the collar and make sure the groove where the oil seal runs, it shouldn't actually be a groove, it should at the most be a couple of thou deep, if that. Um, if you've got a deep city groove in it, you're going to have to get a new piece. Um, Anyway, we just put that on. The taper on the end is where the hub will fit onto there and it compresses this and holds it onto the shaft uh, a lot tighter. And it also centers everything. So we put that in there, slide it in. Next thing we got to do with the hole that we've got going through the shaft, make sure that it's upright. Because when we get our uh, hub to go on, there's two holes in the hub. And you'll see they're running 90 degrees apart, they're not opposite. The reason is, that the hole is lined differently with a spline that's inside that's got to go on the shaft. So you've got to make sure that your hole meets up with this because you've got to put your split pin through it. Don't shove it on, put the nut on, lock it up and then try to get the pin in. So then it'll fit on, on that way with my hole going right in. If I put it on the other one, I'll find that it's maybe not quite as got to fit in the hole. It's just off a bit. So I'm going to put that on there. The next thing I've got to go in is the taper, a split collar that goes on the outside with the taper so that this hub now will fit onto the shaft with them um, get compressed and it will be centered by the tapers and it will be held onto the uh, hull shaft. I put the nut on hand tight, so um, now we're ready to put my uh, brake shoes back on. So before I do that, I'm going to get my little bit of grease here. And I'm just going to put grease on the back where the shoes contact on the back and slide. I'm going to give my arm a little bit of grease down here. That goes where it pivots. And then on the top, Put a bit of grease on my adjuster. It saves us so much trouble when it doesn't seize up. Just put a layer of grease on it. I'm good to go. Yeah. Right, just wipe the grease off my fingers now and we'll look at the brake shoes. As I said before, the brake shoes have a, a leading edge on it. You can see on the end of the two shoes when they're together, this is a leading edge and this is the back end of it. So we need the leading edge to be facing the rotation of the wheel. So as the wheel goes around this way, we put our leading edge on there and this leading edge on the bottom. So the shoes have to go like this. Not like that. They go this way around. Okay, with the leading edge on each one, so that's what we'll do. We're going to set the springs up first and then I'll stick it on. Right, I have my springs set into place. So now I'm just going to put this on here. Now we're ready to put our top spring on. This is a spring that goes on the uh, top of the shoes. It goes in the slot on this side and it goes in the hole on the other and it goes on the back side of it, it doesn't go on the front. So we just hook it into here and we 
it to the other shoe, put it around and put it in the hole there. Pull that onto there. Get all of that and shove it in there. Now this this spring goes up under and onto the handbrake lever there, and then if you get a pair of pliers, I like to use needle nose pliers, and I just get it in that bit there, and then I just <coughs> push it into place, and we're good. Um, now what we have to do is put our little brake retaining clips on. They do have a special tool for this, it's one of these. Um, I don't use that very often. Um, I don't know why I call it habit. But I set it up, get me pliers and do it with pliers because I can see what I'm doing then. And then we do the other one on the other side and we put our drum on. So now all that's left is to fit our brake drum. I've cleaned all the inside of it, all the oil and everything obviously. So just got to fit that. So we just shoot, shoot it down a little bit. Now I'm going to put the nuts on to hold the drum in place for the moment. <coughs> to make life a bit easier, what I'm going to do is cheat a little bit. I'm going to adjust the brakes up so the brake drum is on hard, or the brake adjust is on hard. <coughs> so now I'm just going to snug up my nuts. not in here. The torque setting on this is 150 pounds which is pretty good going. So, as you can see it's even turning the brake drum. I'll put it on a bit more because my shoes are centered now. to do now of course is put our split pin in and it lines up with the old miracle if it doesn't we'd have to go a bit further uh, we don't go back we go forward with it sometimes it's a bit hard when you got that much on as you can see it even pulls against the brake drum anyway I'm going to fit me uh, split pin in and then we're going to top up or make sure that we've got the right amount of oil in the differential and we're going to check the uh, breather on top of the differential and make sure that that's clear because if it isn't it'll build up pressure inside and pull the oil out again push the oil out in the seals so basically that's how you do it replacing the oil seal in the axle um, also I forgot to mention of course uh, it's pretty obvious um, you have to adjust the uh, back brake drum because we've got it locked up solid so we let it back and then adjust our uh, uh, brake adjust to get our brakes work properly so that is actually all. Okay, thanks.